okay so good afternoon and uh, we we start today by spending 20 minutes or so in describing the content of deliverable number one which is due i guess by sunday evening something like that and um, uh, that will be the the first uh, say formal or official or public uh, description of your project okay so for people who already have a final project approved uh, of course they can uh, or start working on on this uh, deliverable on this website which is the first version of the website of the public website uh, for the other groups that are still in discussion as soon as we approve your project uh, we'll tell you copy that to the final document uh, and as soon as you copy that to the final document we will create the repositories with the group uh, so that you can start working okay um, so this uh, checklist for d1 is uh, uh, that tells us what is the con the expected content of the website okay maybe i should remind you because i i i, I got some questions or some strange uh, uh, opinions that if you don't uh, you know there's, there are some people that are very afraid that if they do something wrong at this stage or, or if they are late of, at this stage uh, that could influence the final exam no okay the exam will be all the content will be evaluated on the day of the exam every feedback that, that we give now we gave in the previous week we'll still uh, continue to give you is just for uh, assisting you during the project uh, so if something is wrong now it's not a problem if you are late with the project now okay it will be a problem for you because we, you will start later but it will have no effect on the final exam okay so try to don't be anxious about that uh, let's try to focus on the quality of the work okay none of these uh, will affect uh, the exam of course a good project will be better evaluated at the exam than, uh, than a, a bad project and that's why we are insisting with you in trying to improve uh, or we are being picky about uh, the the features of the project okay so that just to 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 say that say that uh, very clearly at the beginning okay so uh, this is the uh, this is the work for actually this week for as soon as you have the project accepted and you copy that into the final document final project uh, in the google docs uh, you can start working on this and uh, actually what you have to do you will have a project uh, approved with the name of your uh, sorry you will have a um, uh, github repository with the name of your project uh, that we will create and we will give access to the members of the group on that repository you will have actually two repositories one is the public one for the website uh, and the other one it will, will have the name of the project dash code so it's a code repository which is uh, uh, where you will develop uh, the, the implementation of the project so they will be kept separate hmm? the code project will be private to you so that you can do uh, uh, whatever you want uh, this one of course will contain the public website so it will be a public repository you will create uh, a, a website using the github web pages hmm, on the which is a function of github you already seen that uh, for creating very simple uh, uh, websites with a template uh, so it's a very simple tool to use um, here i'm not telling you how to create the website uh, how to structure the website whether it will be everything in one page uh, or 27 different sections uh, or, or whether to put some information before and some other it's up to you okay what i'm saying here is not this is not a template for the website it's just a checklist uh, to ensure that all the relevant information is included in the website you can organize your website as you like depending on your project depending on the importance of what you are trying to say depending on the layout you choose okay uh, you initially you can also start you, you, i would suggest starting with one of the basic layouts that are already offered by the when by github when you create the website and then you can always change the, la the layout later to make it prettier nicer more colored or whatever 
uh, as you go so it's not uh, right now we all we of course we will evaluate the content and the organization of the information not the gra not the graphical part okay especially at this stage of the course so don't waste too much time into the layout so what information should we have on the website project name project acronym of course the url of the project and the group members so this is something that we already have Actually, most of this information is already in the description then we ask you to upload uh, or to include in the website uh, at the beginning the middle in a separate page as you like a vision of the document so we, we what we call the vision statement uh, we saw an example last time with my stupid uh, wake up uh, project uh, or what a vision would be a couple of two or three paragraphs describing the project what the system does for the users mm -hmm. and uh, be and be sure that you are defining the environment where is the system expected to be used uh, what are the users what are additional possible additional stakeholders and how the environment supports the users this is the most important uh, sentence okay that you must uh, uh, have on your website what problems uh, are, will be solved by the system what are the benefits for the users this is just you know expansion on this uh, general uh, request and absolutely avoid describing the technology or making already making now some technical choices that you might regret regret later so we don't have enough information now to decide exactly what kind of sensor or what kind of device we are we are going to use okay it's too early Right now we, we focus on the system we focus on the on the problems that the system is trying to solve we focus on the benefits for the user hmm? and so the idea is more or less this vision statement should be maximum maximum one page i would prefer half a page probably hmm? don't uh, write too many things so don't add a lot of stuff uh, a lot of stuff or a lot of features okay try to always focus on one main feature in many cases i saw projects that when they try to make them better you just keep adding adding stuff <coughs> hmm? uh, it doesn't make them better it will make them more confused okay so being simple being focused being and and uh, being up to the point i wrote here imagine selling it to a non-engineer so try to use words that normal people can understand hmm? okay so this is the, the most important content of the website and then the more detailed uh, information try to include you must include not just trying uh, the description of the four main steps so what is the system doing in sensing in the sensing part what kind of sensing information does it get does it acquire what kind of acting you have in your project so what are the actuators how does it uh, modify the environment as a the, how does it modify or in influence the user in some way interacting what are the main the ways for the user to interact with the environment and with the, in the interfaces what are the interfaces of the system and of course the reasoning which is what are the logical part uh, of the uh, of the system itself okay this is already something we have been discussing in the past weeks uh, we had, we didn't ask to write it down yet uh, we are asking it now okay but in many cases in many description we said okay uh, we don't see any acting uh, in your project and so we try to reason about that and now is the time where you must uh, explicitly write down so you uh, will also uh, understand uh, whether your project is strong on the four points uh, of it or, or if the project is missing some uh, of these important steps okay so this is the, the most important thing is here Be ensuring that the project is strong on all the four uh, steps here hmm? uh, <coughs> you don't need to write pages probably one line is more than enough here so mm, we we, we are, we're not asking you to write uh, a lot of text uh, uh, but being very clear very explicit okay um, very direct also mm. don't try 
to write very general sentences that could be good for any time no try to be very specific very precise uh, for the benefit of clarity for for the benefit of communication with us and also for the benefit of your of your understanding of the project okay the simplest you write the more precise you write the better you understand your project if you are trying to write something too vague trouble too general to uh, unprecise uh, it means that you still do, didn't understand what you are really wanting to do okay uh, of course we will discuss this uh, next week uh, on next monday in the lab uh, so it's important that you try to write something even if it's not right the first time we'll discuss it later and we'll try to improve it together okay uh, and uh, the second uh, section is the mea features we define the six features that an mea system should have uh, uh, of course we already said that they are not mandatory features so it may be that one project is more uh, actually very adaptive and the other is not so much adaptive but it's more transparent so it depends on the quality or the, spe or the specific qualities of your project so here you should all you should try to ask yourselves is my project strong uh, in any of these areas and if so write why Okay, what the system is doing is doing in any of these areas in each of these areas if some of these areas don't, don't have anything so your project is not uh, uh, intelligent for example hmm, it may be uh, just leave it out so while the four steps are really mandatory these ones you, we should try to do something but if it doesn't it's not a problem okay it's normal for some projects to be stronger on some areas and less on, er on other areas so try to uh, highlight the strengths hmm, of your project where is my project more um, st standing out uh, with respect to these categories hmm? so this again is quite easy uh, so this one we you you still haven't it written but uh, you already have we already have discussed it this one is just something that you we ask you to reflect on that and then there's this yeah the last part is the open the open issues section so this is a sort of a conversational part of, of the website actually uh, as you progress with the project uh, at any given point in time there will be something that is very clear to you from the functionality point of view from the technical point of view from the implementation point of view from the documentation from the uh, the I don't know the working of a device or which sensor to choose there are some information that will be clear to you and that will only require work okay that's not a problem there, there are not real issues okay we know that something needs to be done okay we plan for it and we'll try to do that but there are other points where that are still unclear you really don't know how to implement that you really don't know how to distribute the computation you really don't know what kind of sensor you can have you really don't know how to do i don't know face recognition you don't so it's something that you understand that is needed in your project but it's not clear to you uh, yet uh, and you don't have clues or you don't have good uh, ideas how to solve it maybe you need some help in selecting the components some help in finding the algorithms some help maybe in finding some expert that can help you in defining the project so try to write this uh, this question these open issues there in on the website so that you ask yourself okay what what is the part of the system that i'm confident i'm going to build and what is the part that i'm still not confident because there are too many questions it's not clear to me yet uh, how the system is going to be developed in that part that is important for you to focus on the main on the main uh, open issues so that you know that there will be some implementation work on the normal issues on the normal development and some also research work on the open issues as you go some of these open issues will, will close okay you will find solutions and new ones will open because you, okay when you solve the problem then you will discover that behind the corner there will be another one waiting for you okay and uh, so imagine that this open issues part of the website is something live you update it to keep track of your understanding of the system 
if you keep that updated we can read it with the teachers and can maybe help you with the answers uh, especially maybe in uh, you know finding some contact you know that you want something on a specific domain i don't know mm, pollution or gases or or how some part of a vehicle is working so you know you know that it's important what is or uh, what some category of users and so we might try to find some contacts maybe inside polytechnico because there are a lot of uh, skills here from all the all the other departments uh, and so we can create a contact so that you can go and talk to a person that has all the answers that you need and uh, or some other researcher some other company around that may have the, the answer so if if we understand what are the main uh, information needs that you have uh, we may help you find it maybe we don't have all the answers of course but we may try to find a person that can have the, some answers and also from the demonstration point of view the project okay the project is good uh, but uh, i'm thinking about uh, submarine uh, project now nobody is doing that so i'm not making any uh, favor to uh, any of the project and so how can we demonstrate that features into the lab so i also coming up with creative solutions or uh, removing some constraints about uh, uh, how to demonstrate the, the the project in the lab setting so if you have some problem about, about that write them down so that we can find solutions okay um, uh, and maybe you need some special location in which you do the experimentation the demo we can arrange for that or any other issues of that of that kind okay so that is more uh keeping track of your mm, major major questions and so that we can we can discuss them and we can keep note and we can help you uh, probably in finding the answers mm -hmm. that's it so that's what we required for the first version of the website basically probably the 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 most important the part where you need to think more or the most uh, is actually this one because the vision is just rewriting with cleanly okay uh, your project description you, you have to go from four or five lines to maybe 15 lines so but you, ju you just explain it better okay try to write it clearly please okay uh english is not the primary language for any of us but at least try to follow the rules of how to compose a sentence uh, and uh, and um, and uh, always be direct what you want to do what are the benefits what is the environment not try to uh, go around 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 and then or to include a lot of different stuff okay uh, these ones uh, uh, should be clear from the discussions these ones are easy to write uh, and these ones are, it's the first time while you are reflecting uh, are we really able to build this project the answer will be no or well the answer will be not yet okay so what's missing okay so this is the work for this week uh, for those who already have uh, an accepted project for the others we'll try to work as fast as possible towards the acceptance of the project so that we can you can also um, upload it there okay if for some reason there will be some project who don't uh, or succeed in applying or in submitting the d1 by the, this deadline of this sunday okay we'll schedule it for the next week or so okay so we can have a look later hmm? okay so that's for the first step you remember we try to model our development in a series of steps uh, and uh, right now we were here in this problem statement phase mm -hmm. and the problem statement for us is formalized uh, by this uh, uh, deliverable one so the first version of the website we know the summary system description a short description of what the system should do we said half a page one page ma maximum that is the, the, the that's the starting point hmm? and uh, from that uh, half a page you sh we should start analyzing uh, what are the requirements for a system that uh, um, will implement uh, that description 
and the first step should be better understanding the requirement there's this strange word elicitation hmm? elicitation in a, in a way means uh, pulling out from where from the users okay trying to understand from the users uh maybe also the other stakeholders of the system are primarily the users what are their needs uh, and what are their opinions about your project so we gave a very general description a very general framework of what we want to do and then we want to understand in our idea what are the features that are most appreciated most needed by the users what are the features that are well yeah not so important not so very well desired users wouldn't wouldn't pay for them for example or they're not so important or maybe there are some features that they really don't want that don't they totally don't care or they would totally hate probably so in our idea we have a lot of different thoughts different hypotheses and we want to filter these hypotheses with the users hmm? so this is important in general for any project that you are want, willing to start if uh, i'm doing a very huge project but no user is willing to use it i just wasted time and money to build something useless hmm? use it because it doesn't have any user that is willing to use it okay and this is a very <coughs> critical step because we need to collect information from outside evaluate it critically objectively so trying being able to see with an external eye our ideas and being able to change our point of view change our vision because we understand that what we thought was the main feature is not so well appreciated but maybe a secondary feature is more important for the users don't fall too much in love with your initial idea okay try to have your users fall in love with your idea or with a modified version of your idea hmm? this is important in many in many in many projects we don't have time for doing that properly here in this course okay uh, this is a step that we should follow the definition of the general vision and uh, precede the phase of uh, actual formal definition of the requirement so a time where we do some you know focus group with users uh, questionnaires uh, mock-ups uh, tests uh, okay uh, in some cases it's uh, one one idea one suggestion could be you can try to post a description of your project on kickstarter and just fake it imagine you're already done and see how many people are willing to sign it for up for sign up for it or pay for it and so you understand whether the project will be appreciated or not something like that so there are very methods for, of doing that uh, all the formal methods for acquiring user information require a longer time than we have here so we are not asking or we are not including this step formally you know, in the process of, of this course but uh, we I spend a, a few words today and uh, um, try to do that at least uh, intuitively or at least spend some time maybe talking with friends or with uh, relatives or with other people trying to describe your project and listen to their feedback hmm? try to get as many inputs as possible even informal and structured so we don't have time to learn and to apply formal user elicitation methodology there are we don't we won't use them because we want to go move to the project development phase but in this phase well, okay we you will have on monday you will have a website with the presentation of the project so start using that and to collecting feedback hmm? it's very important to from potential users users which are the final targets of the system is not you are not a user never okay the designer of the system is never a, a good user a good potential user for the system itself always find people who didn't take any part in uh, thinking or in inventing the system always external people that are in the target group that's why it's important in the vision to define who are the users it's not any random person it's a person which is biking is a bus driver is uh, i don't know a runner is uh, uh, i'm trying to think about more or less uh, some of the projects so a very specific category of users 
and if you should ask to them uh, this project is for you for people like you mm? as similar as possible to the final targets mm? uh, these users don't need to understand how the system works they, they should be able to understand the value brought by the system without any technical knowledge of how it's working uh, otherwise if you need an instruction manual uh, you're already failed okay and uh, but they will need to understand how to interact with the system so what is the system expected from them in terms of interaction in terms of uh, uh, of use of the system mm -hmm. um, and always uh, the um, the idea behind these uh, processes is that the users should be involved i'm saying should because in this course we cannot do that should be involved in all the steps of the design so here we have an example of a very uh, complex process uh, uh, from the initial starting idea to the final uh, project and in all the steps uh, you just something we don't need to read uh, if you want to read the, the tiny text uh, just go to this uh, address uh, but it's one of many processes and the idea is here is that in every step of the project the user should be involved here in the initial conception phase uh, and during development uh, and during testing uh, and during the final prototype presentation so always have users tell how they feel about uh, your uh, your project hmm? okay there are some uh, some comics here for you uh, on, on the topic hmm? uh, okay the topic of uh, user inclusion in the design process is very important there are also you know ISO standards uh, um, that describe us how to conduct a development process involving the users and uh, a lot of uh, different techniques and tools uh, that will help us uh, we are engineers so we tend to make two kind of mistakes first uh, underestimating people say so, okay we are strong in the technical issue that is what is counting what was what, what counts uh, that's the important part and so let's focus on the technical part okay so we can build uh, really useless monsters okay um, the other hand is uh, think that everything which is not uh, programming or mathematics uh, is just uh, you know uh, void void of value just uh, cloudy is just uh, smoky uh, okay we, we we say that uh, but actually uh, when you are trying to build something that will be used by by persons uh, we must understand that there should be mechanisms for getting information from persons and then cannot be writing an equation or writing a program so there are techniques there are methods which are formal they are not you know computer engineering methods they are more you know, so user-centered design methods uh, uh, they are bordering between computer science and psychology uh, to understand uh, uh, what the user thinks what the user wants and so on so there are tools there are techniques for example one very useful useful tool which is a conceptual tool it's not a program that you will that you install is uh, imagining profiles of real people that are going to use the system they are called personas so they are imaginary persons they don't need to be real for which you describe who they are okay john uh, is, is 22 and uh, goes to school and he likes to bike uh, uh, to ride by uh, bike to school and uh, uh, he has a lot of friends and he likes music so, so you you describe a person as if they were real you describe a bunch of people that are more or less representative of the different kinds of users that your system would have so it's easier when you build when you build the system to ask yourself how will mary use this feature because you already have this person existing in your mind and so you can describe how the system is being used uh, by the different personas which is just fictional users but you know them well you call them by name you know their profile and so you can imagine how they interact with your system so it's a conceptual tool for us uh, to the building of personas can be just made on the, on the whiteboard or can be uh, you know extracted from a, um, a survey but we don't care it's just uh, uh, thinking about uh, 
not in general in abstract the user but we give a name we give a gender we give an age we give some hobbies some preferences and so it will be easier for us to understand how these people would they, they will become our, our friends how they will be use the system and imagine some scenarios some stories okay let's tell some stories about how these personas these people are using our system if we try to tell that uh, it's it will become very much easier it's just it's not for publishing it's not for writing to show it to others it's something for us no? to understand how our potential users can use the system just by writing a scenario so this morning i'm going there and do, and do this activity and oh what happens hmm? and uh, a scenario is a general uh, some behavior set of behaviors uh, which is made of many individual use cases so a use case is a um, container of a very short uh, uh, or very limited in time a set of interactions so use case uh, when i you know uh, i don't know calling for the lift so i go there i walk i press the button i wait i climb being and, uh, and so a series of, of actions of interaction with the system that accomplishes a small goal it's not a full scenario where maybe describe everything i'm doing this morning but uh, in the general scenario there are some moments in which the user is interacting with the system these use cases are interactions described from the point of view of the user but if i'm describing how the user is interacting with the system i am also describing what kind of uh, interfaces the system has what kind of functionalities the system should provide to the user so i'm really describing the specification of the system by describing the actions that the user will accomplish on the system so it's a different point of view and we don't get lost whether okay this button should be here or there because we focus on okay the user needs this button and if the user in our story is using that functionality it means that we need to implement it so it's a way of specifying what we need to implement but in a easier way and in a way that we can see directly which function we can you know filter directly which function will be useful for the users these are i think the, the three tools that are most important if we when we reason about the system even just in discussions and then there are more formal techniques uh, that require time require settings you know focus group are particular famous because people get together in a room and discuss do brainstorming or interviews interviews are very easy you, know, you just go to a friend and say oh what do you think about this okay and later on some more cap evaluations would be useful so when you have a system which is already or finished or even partially finished maybe let somebody else try it even if it's not fully functional it doesn't matter the app uh, okay you don't have any buttons working but the layout do, do, do you understand what's going on in this in this interface no so it's very easy to do just remember to reach out hmm? not just closing yourself in your room and implement but yeah, at every step try to reach out and show the work to somebody else okay uh, and if you are uh, interested in these topics uh, uh i what i would suggest you is to to these two books the first one is a more formal let's say and the second one is very light oh it's thick it's a thick book but it's very light to read uh the design of every, everyday things uh, and you already start you, you know you already cover is quite uh, unsettling because uh, it's a thick kettle with a boiling water inside but you see that the beak is on the side of the handle so you cannot avoid uh, burning yourself uh, when uh, when you're trying to uh, to pour the water for making your tea okay so the the basic uh, assumption in this book is that if something is difficult to use it's never the fault of the user it's always the fault of the designer the ease of use is a designed feature of a system so when you are using something and you feel stupid don't blame it on you always blame it on who designed that system always there's no there are not stupid users there are stupid devices or stupid interfaces okay that require the user to think or to understand more than you would really need how to use how to 
operate a given device, a given interface, a given website, a given mobile application, a given ambient intelligence system, and so on. Uh, so there are very interesting re readings, if you want. Uh, there are parts of the uh, human-computer interaction, say, field uh, that uh, studies also how to uh, how to design the system from the point of view of the usability. Hmm? <coughs> and uh, probably the most important point is that usability cannot be added uh, after the fact. Okay, so the, the, the point here is that the system is very complex, it has a lot of features, so users will not be able to use them. And the boss just says, okay, let's add easy to use at the end of the list. Okay, it's too late. You cannot add usability later. Uh, you should think about it from the beginning. It should be the first point on the list. And so all the other features should be added in a way that they are usable, hmm? that are easy to use and so on. Otherwise, the users will not use them hmm? unless they are forced to. Hmm? That is why a lot of websites or mobile apps are very easy to use and a lot of intranet applications now imagine the the application that you do for uh, selecting the exam for enrolling in the university and so on they are very complex to use they are difficult to understand because you must use them <laughs> so there is no uh, in a general website if it's difficult to use or it's, uh, you don't understand it in in, in less than two seconds you just throw it away you just move to a different website because it's open it's uh, your choice okay if it's not clear from from the home page if it's not clear what you what you need to do you just forget about it but if you have to even if it's difficult to use you have to invest more time hmm? because because there was no incentive in the designers in making it more usable because there's no competition so it's a closed garden so if you want to enroll you have to go through that painful seri series of steps uh, of slow and difficult to use websites that's it and that's uh, let's try to avoid that okay we are building system facing the people so so this is just uh, I, I made it very sure but uh, uh, well we are giving a, a course next year in the in the master level of human computer interaction so if you want to know more we see in a, you in a, in a couple of years um, because it's a course in the second year okay but just to uh, try to pass you the message of or always try to think about the users and the usability next step uh, so what do we have here we have some vision of the system that incorporates the feedback from the users so our vision of the system has changed because now it's no longer just our vision but it's our vision with also the vision from our users at that point uh, we should start uh, cutting the corners say so, okay we have a lot of ideas but at a given point we need, to, we need to fix them and say okay this will be implemented in this way this will be implemented in a different way and this third item will not be implemented we write down what is really required by the system uh, the so-called uh, documents of requirements requirement documents we need to fix down what is the contract of the system okay from this point on we understood what we want we write it down and we write down what are the functions expected by the systems <coughs> by the system it's our choice to include or not include a given feature uh, but uh, once we write it down it becomes uh, our checklist or our uh, schedule of activities we need to implement this stuff uh, and if we we exclude something at this stage uh, oh let's go let's not go over it and uh, again and again and again because there's maybe there's some pet feature that some of you really likes so if you decide to include it do it at the beginning if you decide to leave it out leave it out forever okay that's why we need to distill now, the vision, which is still a general understanding of what the system could do, into a set of points, of ballots. Okay, we need to implement this, that, that, this feature, this button, this functionality, this sensor, this uh, interface, this website, this app with these uh, actions and so on. Huh? Um, what you could do in this phase is imagine you are subcontracting your project. 
you will not be the you know the whole uh, executors of your project you imagine just being the designers you think about the system understand how it works and then you have some slaves somewhere else that will implement it but you need to tell them because their slaves don't they don't think uh, how to implement them so you need to write down what is to be implemented what are the features the characteristics that the system should pro should possess should have in a way that there is no discussion at the end whether the system has been implemented correctly or not okay so if you write a specification which is too general too imprecise then the other people could implement it implement something much different or something really incomplete and you cannot um, complain later because they implemented something that would match the description you wrote something very imprecise they did whatever they wanted and they still you know satisfy the requirements so requirements should be something they say verifiable okay i'm right in line the system uh, you know the system should be fast it's not a requirement what does it mean being fast one second half a second one millisecond ten seconds it's up to you okay so trying to understand uh, what well, is a as a speed requirement is not really our focus here okay um but being precise helps us well because actually these implementer slaves is again ourselves so we are giving a task for ourselves to execute but writing it down in a precise way it's a way of uh, you know decoupling the designers in us and the implementers in us so that we are when we start implementing and we are piled up with stuff to be implemented we still have a checklist that drives us and helps us to say okay we are at which point are we in the implementation of the project mm. so I try to imagine that as a contract mm. and this contract should include uh, some so traditionally the requirements are divided into functional and non-functional requirements functional requirements are the actions the functions the functionalities that the system provides so the system will allow uh, oh, when the user enters into the environment the system will recognize them for example or uh, when the user reached their goal of the day uh, the system will reward them or will notify them so something that the system does the system allows the user to log in very stupid requirement and so on so if you imagine a system is a try to describe whatever you can do with the system you as a user user uh, as an administrator and so on these are all the functions and then you have the qualities of these functions so for example one quality is the security if you are doing the login so what are the security requirements for for logging for uh, you know uh, recognizing the users or managing the password if you are uh, you know um, implementing the reaction of a system when the user is recognized what are the timing requirements the system should, re should react in half a second 100 milliseconds five seconds timing requirements um, so speed performance usability is also a quality requirement so saying that the system is usable in a given way uh, is not a, a, an additional function of the system it is a constraint a way of implementing all the functions portability the system should be run on android only smartphones or on raspberry pis okay can it be ported onto ios no or yes we decide the portability is a constraint it's a non-functional requirement it says what are the devices in which the system is supported it doesn't change the functionalities okay if you have a login and they decide to be android and ios i will have the login for android and login for ios but the functionality erodes the login it needs to be supported in, in different environments for example okay so 
in a description of a system we have a set of functionalities which are easy to list and a set of constraints or context of uh, how this functionality must be implemented functionalities are easy to add or remove are easy to add you can implement this or not the system doesn't crash it's just one more feature or one less feature for the system can you change your profile picture it's a functionality yes or no you can add it later you can decide that you want it and later you can change your mind and delete it functionality usually tend to be not totally but rather undep independent from each other non-functional requirements or qualities or constraints are much harder because once you decide that your application will run in english for example so internationalization is one uh, non-functional requirement you can do that and if you later decide imagine if you later decide that you you also want it in chinese you need to redo everything if you didn't think about that since the beginning adding one functionality means writing some more code changing some constraints on the system means actually touching all the code modifying it everywhere so it's much important uh, very important to define very well at the beginning what are the non-functional requirements so that they are fixed okay and then we can play with the functional requirements which is the extent of the functionality of the system um, good requirements so what you, we write what we decide the system should do should have these you know features so it should be of course correct uh, not ambiguous correct means uh, uh, we really describe we write what the system really needs to do in a way that cannot be understood uh, in differently and possibly complete requirements so see if we forget something the slaves will not implement it so if we if we don't give uh, complete requirements well the uh, we'll, we won't have the, the 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 system complete and running they should also be consistent you should ne never have two requirements that say contrasting things that require co contrasting action okay and it's an important quality is uh, well, we already talked about verifiability having a requirement which is too generic uh, that is not uh, we at the end when you have the running system you cannot check whether this requirement number 37 is satisfied or not because it wrote it in a very uh, imprecise way and so it's useless because that you are you are not specifying what you want but the most prob probably one of the most important and you, we will ask you to, to think about that is the ranking of the requirements it's easy to come up with a very long list of functionality it's not so easy to implement all of them in the time that we have so when you when we are thinking about a long list of functionalities we should always rank them by priority which are the most important ones which are the functionalities that really need to be there in the first version of the system and which are the functionalities that, co that could be added in the second version or maybe in the third version of the system the system is already working well with the first version and we can improve it almost later what are the core functionalities what are the functionalities that bring more value okay to the system and so give you a ranking so these functionalities are the top priority they must be there otherwise the project cannot cannot be run cannot can do anything useful these others okay can they can be useful we will implement them in version two or if time permits if we complete version one in advance we can add them before the, the end of the time of the time we have allocated for the project but otherwise we already decided which are the most important which are the less important requirements do that at the beginning so that when you are late in your implementation and you will be late uh, you know what to drop it was already decided months ago if you find yourself late and you have to decide what to drop or maybe you discover you already wasted one week in working 
uh, on a functionality that will be dropped because you don't have time to complete it it's bad because you will be under stress under pressure and uh, uh, late timing and so on it will fight at the beginning you just decide okay these are the top priorities so let's not work on priority two items unless until priority one items have been solved and implemented so this is a very light sort of management of the project we rank the functionalities by the, their relative priority and so we can work first on the key priorities and then on the later ones uh, there's a lot of liter literature about requirement engineering and it's a very often tends to become a very heavy uh, uh, process a lot of iso standards about the uh, requirements and so on we'll try here to use a, a lighter version of the requirements the features of the system so requirement is something that is a technical value which should, should have a detailed form and so on it should also have all the information needed uh, as we said before to subcontract the work to ourselves in the in the slide version but uh, in the description of the system we always or we also have a, a, a simplified version imagine you know you're buying something off the shelf and you read uh, you know go to the supermarket try to buy something and you read on this on the box some you always find a bullet list of what the system is doing you are building i don't know a, a, a router for your network a wi-fi router so uh, on the box it says you that it's, uh, it does the um, access point function and then the routing and then firewall and then so some short indications about what the system can do in a terms that bring value to the user so i'm buying this because it does this function that it needs of course when i really design it uh, uh, the designer needs to have a lot of more detailed information about the operating systems about the interfaces about the protocols about the, uh, the power supply or whatever it's not written in the box the box only highlights the main functionalities the feature the main features of the device a set of related requirements that allows the user to satisfy a business objective or need here we are the definition so <coughs> we are not asking you to write down all the detailed requirements that would be probably 100 pages or more to write down for your project okay we don't have time to do that and we want to be more light or agile in our development but uh, to specify the features not all the requirements but a set of related requirements is just summarized by, by one feature and this feature should uh, satisfy a business need for a user so the user is willing to pay more that box because it has one additional line on it and it sees values on the on that line these features differently from the vision part of the document or what we are doing can be technical uh, we are we are starting to write down technical specifications for our system so these are also just functional features but are also technical features okay so at a given point uh, we will try to write down the list of features that the system implements for every feature we should understand the requirements uh, but we don't write them down because we don't want to be you know, too long and too they are focused on user needs just imagine you know, writing a, a data sheet but you you do it every day when you are looking from some software to do something you find a lot of them the websites and the websites you have you have the checklist you have maybe the comparison tables and say all these products uh, how do they compare on the basis of a set of features and each of these features you can you can just filter them okay it, i don't need it uh, do i need the professional version or just the free version and you just check which of them are supported and you compare them with your needs and then you decide so it's a very easy <coughs> quick way but also detailed way of describing what the system does just imagine do presenting or oh, don't just imagine you are really doing that you are presenting the system on a website we can imagine a user going to a website and trying to understand do i need this system do i like it 
how can you know okay there's a text that describes it there will be a video but let's let's go into more details specifications technical specification features system features. You, you see them into websites that you visit and then you have a list a checklist maybe organized by topics you know, with subsections subheadings where you can go and see more no, you have a, also you are buying a new smartphone also in the front page you will have all the pictures and the videos and the models that are presenting that then you switch page and go to the specification and they will tell you the memory the functionality the the, 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 um, uh, the specific <coughs> feature that that device has compared to other ones hmm? so that <coughs> would be our our point of view not get lost in the details of formal requirements uh, but uh, focus on product features so in the next step after deliverable one will be closed you should try to understand uh, you know give uh, get user feedback about uh, you know elicitation of users needs and so on and then try to distill them distill the, the behavior of your system and the design of your system into a set of uh, features each feature should brave bring a user visible behavior or a user visible benefit or solve a user need okay data visible to the user i present some data some information to a user i collect some data from a user i am doing some acting that the user is able to feel or to see or to perceive a feature could be a functionality that the user could call so the user can you know personalize something the user can ask for a function the user can save a data so these are new other features from the user uh sensing features well we don't know we're talking about the sensor yet but what kind of information is the system getting so i'm monitoring the temperature in the courtyard here okay so it's a, it's a feature it may be there it may not be there our system has it so it brings value to the system what what the user can customize what preferences can the user express whether these pre preferences and customizations are explicit or are implicitly learned or determined by the system and uh, <coughs> what are the modifications on the environment that the system is, is performing okay i'm controlling your life i'm uh, uh, breaking your car whatever there are all features that our system can bring hmm? and uh, <coughs> so the the we this will be part of uh, deliverable number two that we will see in the day in the next step okay so but let's prepare to describe our system in this way so think about the box in which you're selling your system what you are going to write in your box uh, well in a box you don't have 100, pa 100 pages of space you have maybe 20 ballots hmm? and so try to synthesize what are the 20 most 20 15 35 no? more or less some tens maximum of ballots uh, in which you can synthesize you can uh, summarize summarize not synthesize summarize the features of your system hmm? um, in a way no let's just skip this so for example uh, in our wake up uh, project uh, in the example wake up project there could be this could be some features that we i would print on the on the box of uh, my of my system so we can define a default uh, alarm hour so it's an alarm where you can define a default and then the system will be able to customize it probably so the alarm will be corrected according to your google calendar the system has two working modes this is a customization and then they describe in away mode the smartphone rings in home mode the music and lights are used in addition to the alarm to the phone alarm and so on the alarm is able to detect when i wake up so i don't need to stop the alarm myself because the alarm will stop by itself may define the preferred music playlist may associate your home devices uh, in home mode of course uh, to be used uh, by the system so these are just examples no? uh, we already have a, the vision of how the system works 
each of us probably started to imagine ways of implementing that vision so what the system could do or not yeah here we are trying to distill a list of the things that we promise the system will do it's a promise here okay alarm detects when i wake up so i need a mechanism for detecting when the user wakes up maybe in a, in home mode in a way mode they will be different probably and uh, when i detect it i need the reasoning part of the system to stop the alarm for example so behind so these are sentences that are clear to the user features that are easy to understand but if we read them with the engineer in mind we see what we need to implement for supporting that feature this feature implies this one uh, each of them implies a set of different requirements a sensors um, an algorithm for processing the sensor data a mechanism for uh, switching on or off the alarm so the alarm probably is another device so we need an, an api for uh, sending a command to another device and so on so we have a list of uh, more detailed uh, implementation issues to implement this one in a f more formal process we will be required to write down all these requirements in our work we just try to understand or be uh, being aware of what that implies but each of these implies or we should be able to read uh, behind the lines what is the implementation part that is needed and here we can decide the ranking so if we were late in the implementation which one of these features are more important which one could we leave out or could be left for second or third iteration hmm? that is the level which uh, we are describing technically the, the requirements of the system so we can imagine giving this list to another person say, okay can you just please implement a feature oh sorry a system with all these features hmm? and so it should be precise enough uh, to understand uh, okay is the away mode implemented correctly well, we already have some information that is able that for which we are be, we will be able to check whether if I am away only the smartphone rings or something else also rings hmm. for example I'm not saying here how the system detects the two modes is that automatic or manual or oh, it's a detail we are not specifying here so there are a lot of details that are not yet specified here we will work them out uh, as we implement but we promise the user that these are to real mode that, that will be supported by the system hmm? uh, and also this uh, adaptation to google calendar is it important or not so you just imagine it is just a short list because it needed to to fit into a slide <coughs> but when you are brainstorming about your project you will you will come up with much longer list and try to reshuffle reorder them in the priority order then you will write them down this will be your deliverable number two or part the first half of deliverable number two which uh, <coughs> is due to uh, at the end well next month at the end of april okay so after we we close on deliverable one we, you can start working on the features with the, your understanding of the vision of the project with the users feedback about the, the um, the, the project and uh, okay try to distill them into a list of features um, in that the same deliverable we also need uh, to write to describe uh, the architecture of the system so we in the past in the few years we had uh, two different deliverables one for the features and the other for the architecture but then time the times were too much overlapping so we decided to merge both of them into one or deliverable in any case we can have you know question or discussion during the labs every week um, so the architecture will be a separate step a separate content that logically follows the features once i have defined what the system does then i'm starting to ask myself how is the system organized to be able to provide these features 
what would be the sensors what would be the computers how they will be connected what data will be uh, will they exchange uh, where is a given function a given feature implemented uh, that's the topic for the next uh, step uh, mm? they will uh, see that in a probably in a couple of weeks uh, before this deadline and um, so the next step will be the definition of the architecture so uh, I guess I, I should stop here so that you have time, uh, maybe if you want to discuss or to move to the lab uh, for the next hour.